And we're live. I think we're live. We're actually live. What's going on, everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. Hope you all are having a fantastic day. Um, I'll turn my other speakers down so we don't feed back. If you're new to the channel, uh, this is guitar stuff. And every Thursday at 5 p.m., we do a live thing. And it is usually a Q&A. And what usually happens is that people over on uh, people go over to patreon.com and they ask their questions and then I answer them and I've got a few kind of fun interactive things I want to talk about today um, a video idea if you're in our Facebook group I already already kind of teased it over there so you'll have to check it out uh, I think a lot of people actually don't even know we have a Facebook group I guess I don't talk about it enough we have like 750 people I think in our Facebook group so you need to go over there and hang out um, because I've got a really cool idea uh, for some for some stuff so anyway that's what's going on um, so we're gonna get into some questions in just a minute just to give you a little kind of heads up we are in Rapid City South Dakota so um, since we talked last we went to Yellowstone we went to Grand Tetons. We went to, uh, yesterday we went to Mount Rushmore. We went to Crazy Horse Memorial. We've been seeing a lot of stuff. Like this part of the country has a lot of neat things. Um, Black Hills. Um, we're gonna go <laughs> see some other Native American stuff. I've been actually really, really, really been enjoying this. Um, and for those of you that have hung in there, I really appreciate it because it has been over a month since we've had a successful Thursday afternoon live stream. When we were in California at my parents' house, there was just no internet speed. We were barely surviving, like getting videos uploaded on time. Some of them were late. I mean, it was just that, I don't know. I don't understand how California even in town can have the worst internet it's like supposed to be the cutting edge of everything and it just didn't work so uh anyway so we so now we're in the middle of nowhere and everything is fine i i don't get it but that's how it is um for those of you that are interested in a little bit more in some of our travel stuff i've been sharing a little bit of it on our channel um this you know this channel like intro to videos and stuff but if you go over to our Music and Mascara channel, um, Leslie will be popping in um, probably in a few minutes, and I'll make sure that she puts the link to um, our other channel that talks all about our travel and what we're doing and motorhome stuff and four-wheeling and RC car driving and all that fun stuff that's not guitars because there's a lot of it that isn't. So. Um, You'll definitely have to check that out. I would appreciate it if you did. We're really trying to grow that grow that channel as well too. So, um, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get into some viewer questions. Uh, we got some pretty interesting stuff. Let's see here. Hang on. Let me find it. This is a pretty easy question. Jason over on Patreon says, do orange drop capacitors really make a difference? I know I'll get a straight answer. Um, to me, in my experience, orange drops are the most consistent, the easiest to get, and the most economical for the quality of everything. You can pretty much use whatever capacitor you want uh, I wouldn't use an electrolytic, but any basic little capacitor will work. The only thing I would tell you is I would use, don't use old stuff. I know everybody wants to like, I got these 70 year old capacitors from Russia and they're going to be tone heaven and don't use them because they probably drifted over time because they break down over paper and oil capacitors break down over time. So. I'm not saying don't use paper and oil capacitors. I'm saying don't spend extra money and don't use old ones 
because the values um, and the reliability um, will probably have gone down quite a bit because that's how paper and oil capacitors break down. The cool part about orange drops is they're super duper dead reliable. The only thing I would say about them to make sure is if you go on Amazon and buy orange drops, just because they're orange doesn't make them good. Um, I think it's, so if you look at a capacitor, we have a video about this on our channel. Um, if you search our channel for like how to read a capacitor, um, there'll be a video there. It's not real long and it'll tell you what all the numbers and letters mean. But typically the top row doesn't mean anything. It's usually all like um, brand and where it was made and all that kind of stuff. And the second row is going to give you your voltage, your value, and the value is typically, so let's say it's like a 0.047 cap. A 0.047 cap will be, it will say 473 because 47 is the value. Three is the decimal place mover. So your 0.047, that video goes into all that way, way more technical than I'm going to do right now. Uh, but the last letter usually is a letter. It's usually a letter of the alphabet. And that is your tolerance. A being the lowest tolerance, like the tightest tolerance, and Z being the highest tolerance, like it might be kind of close. J, I think, is 5%. K is 10%. Make sure that those capacitor tolerances, I always get J and below. Now, it's not cost effective to get A or B or C or D on a guitar, that stuff is like super high tolerance stuff for like radios and stuff. Like when, you know, when we're trying to do like point in on a particular frequency down to the, you know, so that's not applicable to a guitar. But, but if you were to go like a J tolerance on a guitar, that would be low enough. Cause I think that's 5%. Um, in that video, it tells you that it's all, it's way more specific than what I'm being right now, but just check tolerance. Don't worry about voltage. Um, don't worry about really anything else. Just make sure that the value is right and that the tolerance is good. Um, other than that, you could pretty much use whatever you want. But like I said, a lot of tone freaks are gonna wanna use something super old and super like, ooh, it's vintage, but that means it's usually not as good. So unless it's something, you know, um, and okay, the other thing is just because it applies a certain way to a guitar pedal, because, you know, like Analog Man and, well, he's a, he's a very good example of it. Analog Man will like find like new old stock capacitors, like 15 of them, and he'll make a special run of pedals using these particular capacitors or these particular transistors, and they're 50 years old. Uh, but he knows what he's doing with trying to find and he'll measure everything um, and make sure that it's good. And then even then, maybe sometimes you'd get a dud. And I bet that he would buy a box of 50 of them and end up with 15, 18, 20 good ones. And that's what he ends up with. He has to go through a bunch to get good ones. So don't do any of that. Just buy new stuff, but make sure that the tolerance is really good. Um, that's the only thing I would say uh, about that. That would be the first. That would be the first thing. Uh, let's see. Then there's another one. I lost a question somehow. I think. Whiskey sour. It's my new thing. I've been doing whiskey sours. All I do is just take a like a half a lemon, squeeze it in the glass, and I'm using rye whiskey on top of it. Super simple. It's my kind of been my my new go-to. Um, all right, <coughs> Ben. Hey Dylan, on a single humbucker, single volume guitar with no other pickups or controls, can I use a push-pull volume pot or coil splitting? Yes, you can, because a we just is, we actually just covered this in our Patreon class beginner wiring stuff last week on Sunday. 
So we're going to talk about that in a minute, and we're going to use this question as a segue, but I'm going to answer this question first. So, yes, you can. So here's the thing. When you look at a push-pull pot, okay, it's got that box on the bottom with the little legs sticking out, right? That's the push-pull part, okay? And then you got the round part with the three legs coming off. That's the pot part. So you got push-pull, pot. So you got that box on the bottom, and then you got that got the normal pot part. What people don't realize, a lot of people, is, you know, if you've not done much guitar wiring, is that those po those portions of each other are not connected to each other at all. Now, obviously, they're grounded because it's the case and it's right, so they're, they're, they're grounded together. But they're not wired together. They're not connected together at all. All that three things with the six legs on it is three side-by-side -side legs. All that is is a dual dual pole, dual throw switch stuck on the bottom of a regular volume or tone pot. That's all it is. And the volume or tone pot is separate from the switch. So you're doing, they're not related at all whatsoever on your guitar. Um, we went through this pretty detailed. We drew a bunch of pictures and stuff, whiteboarded it all out um, on our class on Patreon. So if for those of you that don't know, every fourth Sunday of the month on Patreon, we do a class. It's a live Zoom class. So literally, you're on camera. You can bring a guitar that you're working on, having questions about, having trouble with. Live on camera, voices. There was, there was three of us there this week. It was super fun. Um, and that's a, that's a level on Patreon over there that you can get. Now, here's the thing. It's a $45 Patreon level, but you, I don't care if, let's, now I'd, I'd obviously like you, for you to subscribe every month because it would, you, you will get value out of it. But, for example, we're going to do a series on wiring. If you just want to come be a part of that for a few months and, and learn all that wiring stuff and then quit, and then next time you see something that we're doing, something interesting, I, that doesn't bother me at all. I just want you to come be a part of it, okay? So um, the cool part is on five weekend months, so this coming Sunday is the fifth Sunday of May, we're going to do a bonus class. So anybody that paid for this month or you can still, you can still come be a part of it um, gets the fifth Sunday for free. So if you're going to, like, get one month, get the five Sunday months for sure. Super cool. Um, so we're going to get, so what we're going to do this Sunday, is going to be really fun. Um, the guys that were in the class last week had a couple of guitars that they were working on and wanting to do some wiring projects on. And I think I've got all the parts to do those projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my soldering iron um, and we're actually going to build some wiring. We talked about like the concepts of signal flow through the guitar last week and how we diagnose problems and how we do all that. So that's what last week was. This week, we're actually going to build some circuits together. So I'm going to actually get out the soldering iron and that sort of stuff. So if you want to become be a part of that, you're more than welcome to do it. It's patreon.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. You can check it out. If for some reason you cannot make it to the live class, or let's say you did not make it to the live class, there's another tier, I think it's 10 bucks. And what we do is we release last month's video 30 days later, so you can at least watch it. It's not live, obviously, but it's last month's recorded. The other cool part about that is you get access to all of them. Um, so like if you subscribe to the $10 thing, you would get access to like the guitar setup courses that we just did too. So super cool. Anyway, I just want to mention that because that, that question was literally specifically covered in last week. So it was super fun. Um, okie doke. Let's see. That's that one. That's that one. And then we've got, uh, hang on one second. I've got some other questions here. <clears throat> I was re-soldering. This is 
I don't know how to say her name. I'm sorry, so I'm not going to slaughter it. I was resoldering a Telecaster control plate yesterday, and it's no longer working. I think I messed up the three-way switch. When I finished, the neck alone works, and the bridge worked fine, but the middle position isn't working. Again, here's another wiring question. We actually talked about this in our class last Sunday. Probably what happened when you soldered your Telecaster control plate, I've done this, we've all probably done it, Tele control plate, tele switches, if you drip too much solder down in the switch, sometimes um, you can cause it to bridge across and then it won't and then it won't work. It'll short the switch out. So if you can clean out any excess solder, it's possible that you can salvage that switch. I have done that. Man, I'm getting in a hurry, things are going, or maybe sometimes the soldering iron is not hot enough, and so I stay on it too long, and then all of a sudden a blob of solder. You know, so you gotta be patient, right? Like, turn on the soldering iron for the Weller ones we use, the orange one. Turn on the soldering iron, put it on three and a half, because when I put it up, sometimes the knob gets moved, and then, you know, and like, just walk away like go get a glass of water or something and come back like make sure it's all the way hot and then then you're boom 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 but i think if i rush sometimes and i'm pushing i'm like on it too long i can end up using too much solder dribbles down in there and screws up my switch i've done it i've done it it's i get it um i'm building a guitar with mini humbuckers what is the rule of thumb regarding pot values for these pickups? Um, typically, mini humbuckers are 500K pots. Because everybody says humbuckers take 500K pots and single coil, you know. Um, that would be my thing too. If you follow the channel for very long, you'll know that I'm really one of these people that doesn't like to choke the guitar down at all. I want it to be as open as possible. So the higher that number is, the more open that guitar is going to be, right? So 500 over 250. So that, that's what I would do. Um, yeah, so that's, that's where I would start with that. If it ends up being a little too harsh for you, then you could try a 250. Um, you could try, and I don't know what the volume tone situation is, but you could try, you know, 250s on one pickup set of pickups and you know if you got volume volume tone tone like there's nothing saying that you have to use the same pots all the way out throughout um on a telly for example sometimes i'll use a 250 volume and a 500 tone i really like that setup uh on a <coughs> double mini humbucker you might end up using uh, 500s on the neck pickup and 250s on the bridge pickup or a 250 volume control at least on the bridge pickup to tame it down a little you know it just kind of depends on what your what your pickups sound like um, I would start with 500s and then if you want to come down from there either use your volume knobs you know because when you use your volume and your tone circuit just when you're using it turning things down playing with the stuff you may find that you'll you'll be flexible enough there but if you want to choke the guitar down a little bit, then you can change one or both pickups to 250s. Um, yeah, so let me make sure we don't have any super chats or nothing in here. Awesome. Okay, so, uh, and then our last question, uh, it's the one I lost too. I don't know where it went. It was a really good question, and I wanted to give the guy a shout out, so I apologize for losing your question. Okay, so the question is, what, we're talking about guitar shims, and he asked, when you use a shim in a guitar, for those of you that follow my channel, you know that I'll take a piece of like cereal box. That's my favorite. Cereal box or Coca-Cola box or, you know, that, that thickness of box. And I'll use two layers of that 
and I'll put it in the back of the neck pocket behind the rear screws and I'll put the guitar together. It gives me about two degrees of neck angle and I really, really like it. That's like my favorite. On a telly, two degrees of neck angle, which I think what they should have came with in the first place. Two pieces of cereal box, boom, it works awesome. Some people use a piece of credit card. Okay, so the question he asked was, if you do that, over time, will you get a hump at the end of your neck because of, um, you know, because of that shim being in there? Will it change the shape of the neck? Will it warp it? Because there is a certain company out there somewhere, <coughs> Stumac, who markets these like $16 full neck pocket shims. And there is a whole band of people who think that you have to have these shims because if you don't, you're gonna ruin your neck and you're gonna put a little ski jump on the end of it. And over years of that tension, it's just gonna cause all these problems. It's a bunch of baloney. If you tighten the guitar neck down properly. And when I say tighten the guitar down, I mean, oh, I put my screwdrivers up. I had a bunch of work stuff in here earlier. I mean like, run the screws in. You saw my video, if you see my, that's really a popular video. Run my screw, uh, run the screws in till they're snug. And then you take your screwdriver and you go like that. No torque. A lot of people have this common misconception that there's so much tension there and that this guitar is gonna come apart and it it can't move and it's like it's gotta be super, you know what I mean? No. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of baloney. The the neck pocket doesn't have to be so tight that you have to beat it out of there. Um, you don't have to tighten it down with an impact wrench. All you have to do is just run the screws in and go eh, 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 and make sure they're even. Make sure the neck pocket shim that you used is flat. And that's it. That's all you need to do. You're not gonna lose sustain by putting a shim in it. I tell this, you've heard me say this many, many, many times. If the guitar doesn't play right, it doesn't matter. When you put two pieces of stereo box in there and it cures all of your playing problems, because that's the way Fender should have did it in the first place. And in fact, that's the way Fender did do it because they used little paper shims from the factory, just like cereal box. Actually, I feel like they used, I know it wasn't, it was probably some kind of packaging they had laying around, but it, theirs was a little thinner. It was more like manila envelope kind of thickness. Um, they did do it from the factory. So that is the way they came when it needed it. I think all Telecasters need two degrees, period. I think they should be made that way. When we make our bodies custom from scratch, we do a custom Tele, um, we put two degrees in the neck pocket because I think that's just the way it should be. Um, but the shim's not gonna affect sustain. If the guitar doesn't play right, then it doesn't matter. You're never gonna have the sustain right. You're never gonna make it feel right. Um, it's never gonna feel right, so it's never gonna play right, so it's never gonna sound right. That's all there is to it. So a couple of pieces of cereal box, cures it all, and you're winning. That's all there is to it. Um, playing cards. Yeah, good example. Um, and Okay, so three card Monty, does that mean you use three cards when you do it? Um, and which ones do you use? Uh, because I heard face cards don't have as much sustain as aces do. That's what I, oh, see, he uses ace. He uses an ace. Makes sense, makes perfect sense. Spades, hearts, diamonds, I mean, really. Let's, let's flush this out if we're gonna be this nerdy about it. Um, <laughs> Rice Krispies, you get the snap, crackle, and the pop. <laughs> oh man, I love it. This is so funny. Oh, see, a joker would be good too. A joker would, would be fantastic. Hey, Driddle, I shipped a pickup to you today. Cardboard won't compress over time. It won't. Cardboard is compressed. I mean, 
cardboard like in a box corrugated with like squishy stuff in the middle wheel but it it is compressed that's how it's made <laughs> so it, it it won't it won't compress um and it will not take on moisture or anything any less or more than the rest of your guitar will you know that sort of stuff ol hansen are you drunk dude if it took literally this much of a drink i'd have way more problems in this world no i'm just enjoying myself tell you the truth this is so fun and it's been like a month and a half since we've been able to do this um i'm super super stoked to be able to do it uh okay a couple things um i was making a pile of pickups today and i sent them all out and i accidentally made one the wrong color so i have an extra i know it sounds dumb but um there's double cream bobbins in here and they were supposed to be double black with no cover. Uh, and so I have a neck center punch pickup. Normally it's a two week wait time when, um, you know, for pickups. Usually it's about a two week wait time when you order from me. But I have one neck center punch, 50 millimeter neck center punch sitting here uh, in a chrome cover. If anybody wants one, let me know, shoot me a message. You could just go to the website and make it. Uh, or order it and I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, you'd have more money if that's all it took to get drunk. So funny, interesting story about that. Um, I don't get drunk. Uh, I have been really drunk maybe once or twice in my entire life, not on purpose. I don't like that feeling, so I have never really been one to do that. And it's really funny because it's funny you say that about the money because you know we go out for when back in the old days like in 2019 um when we were going out and seeing a lot of live music and stuff people would be like i can't believe you go out so much i don't know how you can afford to go out and it's because i'll buy one or two drinks for the whole evening and i don't i just don't care about it i go out literally for the music like I, that's why i'm there um yeah super fun uh, let me talk to you real quick. So we talked about the Patreon thing. Um, okay, so let me talk to you about this idea I have for a video. <clears throat> I was watching another channel. It was actually a computer channel. I follow, um, if you guys have seen it, uh, Jay's Two Cents. I follow him because I don't have a gaming computer. Well, I have a gaming computer. It's not what I use it for. I use it for video editing. But I try to keep up on computer stuff because if I need to upgrade something or, you know, I just keep up on it. It's one of the channels that I watch that's not guitar related. I actually don't watch guitar related stuff um, usually. I usually watch other stuff. Anyway, I was watching Jay's Two Cents last night. And he had, he was doing a video where he was like doing a rig roast where people sent in pictures of their computers and it wasn't really a roast it wasn't like mean it was really constructive and positive it was like hey first of all that's really cool that's an awesome build blah blah blah. here's what i would do a couple little improvements i would make etc like to bring everybody up it wasn't it wasn't like a roast you know what i mean like being mean to people on purpose it wasn't I, you know me i wouldn't do that but I want to do that. So over on our Facebook group on YouTube, or I mean on Facebook, um, I don't know what the name of it is to tell you the truth. So Dylan Talks Tone has a Facebook group. I don't know if you knew that. It's called the Dylan Talks Tone Insiders Group. There is 758 people in it. I will put the link, I'll, you know how you, YouTube is about this stuff, they don't like these links, but I'm going to put it in here anyway. You are welcome to go over there, I would really love to grow that community. It's not part of the Patreon stuff, there's no, it's free, there's no, you know what I mean? The rules are the same rules that I have on YouTube. You have to be nice. If you are not nice you're gone and you may not get a warning 
you just you have I know we're all nice so we can just be nice okay um, so that's the only rule you can talk about whatever you want in there you know it's guitar group so um, so go join that group and post a picture of your rig so your guitar if you want to be a part of this your guitar your amp and your pedal board all together and um, and put and put it all in there you know put a put a nice big photo of everything in there and what I'm gonna do is we'll probably compile a few of them I made a post over there it was like this is where you post the pictures for the rig roast it's real easy to find it's in big letters it's in that group post a picture and then I will probably put together and we will do some kind of thing where we go through all the photos and I'll pick a bunch of them and we'll talk about them and it, it I think it'll be fun because it, first of all, it will really, it will bring you all more into it. You know, we're making these videos and stuff, but I think it will be cool. Um, I don't know to recognize you all that show up here every week. I and I appreciate you, and so you know, it would be awesome to be like, to put a face with a name. You know, to be like, oh, you know, um, Driddle or you know, Devil May Asian or or Cecil Muzak or whoever. Like, this is and put your YouTube name next to the post so I know who it is and and be like you know this is awesome like we can see you play or maybe you're just getting started or doesn't matter I just think it would be really really fun to have one of these Thursday thing I think that's what we're gonna do is do it like a Thursday thing or I'm not really sure how we'll do it but where we we kind of have this rig roast we get to talk about our gear you know I think that'll be really super fun um, so that's that's what I want to do that's that's it let me just run through here really fast. Uh, so I think the reason bare knuckle gets away with double cream is because they're not in the United States. Um, I would imagine, and I don't, I do know this, but I don't know how it applies in this situation. I've had this happen to me before in other businesses. It depends on what the other country is, where the product origin is, whether they have to honor the trademarks in the United States. So, you know, like obviously China, um, and there's other countries too that they don't have they don't have to deal with it. So it's possible that's how um, bare knuckles getting away with it. Psychotic Paisano. That's an awesome name. Recent subscriber, first on a live. Thanks, dude. Um, let's see. I can't post links at all. Oh, you can't post links? Hang on. I guess I'm the only one that can post links, huh? So what she's trying to do is I really want you all to go subscribe to our other YouTube channel. That is like my biggest plug for the day youtube.com slash let me just make sure it's right uh, 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 yeah, it is okay cool I'm gonna put this post in here everybody go subscribe to this channel I know you'll love it and if you're curious about stuff that we're doing that's not music related because we're doing a lot of really other neat stuff um, I use cornflake boxes You'll, you'll break the neck way before it's tight enough. Exactly. The thing is, is it doesn't need to be that tight. For sure. And I think we've decided that Ace of Spades is the best card to use for a shim. I've actually been thinking about... Um, one of the things I've been thinking about doing is... I've been actually thinking about buying... A bunch of carbon fiber because the other thing I use is 0.3 millimeter thick carbon fiber and it works really really well it's super stable and I've been thinking about cutting a bunch up and actually selling that on the website let's see just going through some of these to make sure we're good So I'll tell you something funny about uh, Double Cream. So Double Cream 
um, is so elusive that when I order double cream bobbins, I get them, but they send them to me and they're not perfectly matched. Crazy, crazy. How about hemp fiber? I mean, yeah, you could use anything. It really doesn't matter what you use for a shim, as long as it's stable. Um, yeah, man. Who needs Duncan if we have Dylan? That's right. That is exactly right. Uh, all right, awesome. You guys, this has been cool. Uh, we're about 35 minutes in. I usually try to keep these about 35 or 40 minutes, so you guys have been awesome. If you have any questions, need anything, let me know. We're just here. We're in South Dakota uh, until Saturday. And then we head on to across. We're going to go to the Badlands. And then we're going to go across to uh, Wisconsin. And then up through Michigan. And then down through Indiana and Illinois. And then back to the southeast. So if for any reason... Um, you might want to meet up or say hi or whatever. Let me know. Um, we are traveling safe. We get this question a lot. Of, he said, did you take Needle Highway? Ah, she's like, I told you. We'll go check it out, dude. It was right there. We drove right past it yesterday. Um, I will tell everybody, because we get this question all the time. Um, we are traveling as safe as possible. It's just us. And our world is this motorhome. So, um, I mean, we grocery shop once a week. Um, we have, we've been going to national parks and stuff. Uh, did you see the picture I posted where I met that? I cannot remember his name now um, because we were, it was raining. And so he like literally ran across the parking lot and he was like, Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. I'm like, what? Who is, you know? And he's like, I watch your YouTube channel. That's so cool. And blah, blah, blah. So we just... We exchanged hellos and it was raining and he's like, can I get a picture? He ran after me and he's like, can I get a picture really quick? And that was a picture. Leslie took a picture of that. Um, that was really cool. But normally we're like in these national parks off on our own. Some of them like Old Faithful, there was a lot of people. So you're like trying to find like your own little corner to be in away from everybody. You know, so you're trying to be as safe as you can. Um, I'm not, We there has been a, some places that we have like intentionally not gone <laughs> um you know but you just look over there and you're like ah oh, there's way too many people i do not want to deal with that and you know wearing a mask and it's 80 degrees outside but you're still doing it because it's the right thing to do and you're taking pictures and you know what i mean so super super fun take the needle from north down to custer we did that then come back north on the road with the pigtail bridges to Keystone. You see Rushmore through a tunnel. I think we did that. We didn't do the needle. But we didn't do the needle? Okay. On the road. But we, did the tunnel we did do the tunnel though. Um, what do you think about Fender Cunif reissue pickups? I would like to try some. I would like to try some. Um, yeah, I would like to try some. I'll tell you what, hang on. You know what? We haven't done? I haven't given Ben Burzak anything. Ben Burzak. Burzak. I don't know how to say your name. Uh, if you're still here, do me a favor and go over to Dylan Talks Tone and uh, send me your mailing information and stuff. Okay, cool. Go over to Dylan Talks Tone, go to the little contact thing, and uh, send me your mail information. I'm going to send you some stuff. I like to give away random, random stuff. Let's see who's been here since almost the beginning. Uh, is Psychotic Paisano still here? How about that? Maybe Psychotic Paisano. Maybe we'll give him something, too, if he's still here. See, that's the trick. You have to watch the entire show. And then at the end, I might accidentally throw something in there. Uh, yeah, cool. Excellent. 
Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, Keystone has an awesome alpine slide. We did drive past it. Uh, it was really cool. We went to Rushmore. Rushmore was like Rushmore. I mean, I've been there before. And that was very... I'm going to write a blog post about it. I'm just going to say that. I'm Native American. Very much Native American. Not like a bajillionth of a percent. I'm like actually a Native American. And so being out here in South Dakota, and I'm actually reading or listening to an audio book um, right now, Black Elk Speaks, listening to, uh, listening to that book, learning all about this area. Um, and so, you know, learning that Mount Rushmore was actually supposed to be Indian chiefs until the other guy got a hold of it and changed it to white guys. And so really interesting history. Like, so I'm, I'm kind of still processing all learning about it and being here and seeing it all for real. It's very, very interesting. Um, so I'm probably going to write a blog post about it. It's probably going to take me a little while to put it together though. Cause I'm learning a lot, you know? Um, but it's, it's, it's a little more personal actually than normal. My boss's business cards make the best gym. That's awesome. You guys are great. Thanks for, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. And uh, we will see you all probably Monday. <laughs>